Onuman story is from the 1800s and so frightened people that the city decided to try and bury it, both figuratively and literally. This is the story of Simon McTavish. Simon McTavish was born in Inverness Shire, Scotland and he came to Montreal on the heels of the British conquest, in 1775. He founded the North West Company, a rival of the Hudson Bay Company in the fur trade, and with his ruthless business skills, McTavish was soon the richest person in Montreal. He wore the finest clothing and jewellery. McTavish became famous, some would say arrogant, and he presided over an assembly of prominent Montrealers that he called, the cream of the town. With all of his displays of money and lavishness, he insisted on being known as, the Emperor, and, La Marquis. In October 1793, at the age of 43, he married a beautiful 18-year-old French-Canadian girl named Marie-Marguerite Chaboualez, the daughter of a trading partner. With his fortune secured, McTavish and his new bride moved to London, England, where he hoped to live out the rest of his days in luxurious bliss. However, his wife soon became seriously depressed, and in 1795 they moved back to her home of Montreal. McTavish, perhaps in an effort to cheer up his wife, decided to build a castle high on the slopes of Mount Royal, on land he purchased as his country seat. Using the finest materials available, such as hand-cut limestone blocks, the McTavish Castle was built in the style of the baronial estates in the highlands of Scotland. It was to be a striking and luxurious building that could be seen from the city below, a glorious reminder to the richest and most famous person of all, Simon McTavish. By 1804 the castle was almost finished. The foundations, walls, and roof were in place, and work was about to start installing windows and doors. McTavish, who was supervising work from a small cottage a few hundred yards to the west of the castle, stayed out in the rain one afternoon. He caught a cold. His doctor advised him to take some rest, but never one to listen to anybody but himself. McTavish continued overseeing the work in the damp weather. His cold quickly developed into pleurisy and pneumonia, and he died suddenly on July 6, 1804. The city was in shock and an elaborate funeral was held on the grounds of the unfinished castle. A magnificent vault was built in the back of the garden, where McTavish liked to read, and it was here that he was interred. His grateful nephews erected a tall stone column in his memory, in honor of his manly virtues. Due to legal issues related to McTavish's estate and last will, construction of the castle was immediately abandoned. His wife quickly married another man a certain young British soldier named Lieutenant Colonel William Smith Plenderleith. She moved happily back to England to raise another family, leaving McTavish to moulder and decompose all alone in the vault. Over time, the castle took on a look of dilapidation, as it slowly decayed and crumbled. Cattle wandered inside the ruin during the summer, and in the winter it took on an eerie appearance, as snow drifted through it. It was grey, gloomy, and almost skull-like, its empty windows staring down at the city below. McGill University was founded in 1821 and it is said that McGill students would go to the vault in the winter, wearing snowshoes, and shout and holler to try and raise the ghost of McTavish. In 1827 the students went too far, the locks of the vault were smashed, and the interior of the tomb was violated. An indignant article appeared in the Gazette condemning the vandalism. The locksmith later reported that he felt a frightening presence in the vault and noticed McTavish's coffin had fallen on the floor, spilling its contents. Without venturing inside, he quickly repaired the lock and fled. It didn't take long before the castle was said to be haunted. Some people reported spirits flitting in and out of the doors and windows and horrible groaning noises coming from within the unfinished building, whereas others said that a ghost could be seen dancing on the roof. Even more strangely, it was said that McTavish could be seen on certain nights tobogganing down Mount Royal, not on a sled, but rather in his own coffin. The citizens of Montreal were becoming wary of this haunted castle and many people were afraid to go to the mountain. Groups, such as the Antiquarian Society, tried to reassure the citizens and dispel the fear. The spirits flitting in and out of the windows and doors? Probably nothing more than birds and sheep. The groaning noises coming from within the castle? 
Merely the wind blowing through the shell of the building. The ghost dancing on the roof? Moonlight glinting on the tiles, and nothing more. But how does one explain a tobogganing ghost? Believe it or not, there was a very credible explanation. It wasn't only McGee, LL students grave robbing at the time, but also the professors. During that era, it was illegal to obtain corpses for the anatomy classroom, so the professor was said to go up late at night to harvest a pauper's grave in the Catholic cemetery. He would put the freshly dug up corpse on his toboggan and slide it back down the south side of the mountain to the McGill Medical Building for study and dissection, first thing in the morning. They called him, the Resurrectionist, and suggested that perhaps it was he, and not McTavish, just going about his daily routine. Nevertheless, many people continued to be uneasy with the haunted castle and vault. Finally, with litigation of McTavish's will complete in 1839, it was decided that crumbling castle would finally be dismantled and that the vault would be buried under mounds of rubble to protect it from further abuse. While McTavish's castle was being dismantled, a worker on the high walls fell three stories to the ground and died before surgeons could help him. It was said to be McTavish's final act of vengeance before the vault containing his remains was buried under the rubble of the castle. The city wanted to prevent further grave robbing and literally bury the story that the mountain was haunted, out of sight and out of mind. The tomb is just a few meters under the ground below your feet. All that remained was the stone column erected by his nephews, and even that collapsed in 1942, a victim of neglect and the elements. There was nothing whatsoever left to indicate the remains of the richest, most important man in all of Montreal. After citizens complained, the city decided to install this more modest monument with the same words that were inscribed on the original column that had collapsed. Sacred to the memory of Simon McTavish Esquire WHO died July 6, 1804. Aged 54 years this monument is erected by his nephews William and Duncan McGillivray to commemorate their high sense of his manly virtue and as a grateful tribute for his many acts of kindness to them remarkably. This small stone marker is all that is left of the memory of the man who was once the richest and most famous in all of Montreal, McTavish.